Where would we be without the hard hitting journalism of CNN? I can only imagine how bad things in this country would really be. I mean, you, you could have a governor, say, instructing nursing homes to take in COVID patients, infecting other elderly, the most at risk populations, and nothing would be done about it. That's why I'm so grateful we have CNN. Could you imagine if we didn't have real journalists? You'd have like these fake segments where instead of challenging the governor on, on risking lives and, and, and essentially being responsible for people getting sick and dying, instead of that, you'd have somebody holding up a giant prop cotton swab or something like like whoever this guy is. What what network is this where the guy holds up a giant? Fa- oh, wait, wait, a, wait a minute. That is CNN. OK, all bit aside, I kid you not. You see, Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, has failed by almost every single metric. And I'll be fair. I think China takes a lot of the responsibility for this. uh, uh, Andrew Cuomo, relatively incapable of handling the crisis. But if China had been honest about things, we probably wouldn't be here in the first place. But it is true that Andrew Cuomo did a relatively bad job for some reason. He enjoys puff pieces from the press. Could it be that he's being interviewed by his own brother? Take a look at your screen. For those that are listening, let me describe it to you. Chris Cuomo is holding a giant prop cotton swab. That's the hard hitting journalism we require, CNN. Great job. I remember like it was yesterday when Brian Stelter said, don't go to Fox News because it's spin. Ignore the spin. Basically saying you got to come to CNN for the facts. Oh, what's the fact that you put a a guy on TV holding up a giant prop cotton swab. Meanwhile, we have this story from NBC. Coronavirus spreads in a New York nursing home forced to take recovering patients. It's reckless and careless, said the grandmother of a 96 year old man whose family withdrew him from Long Island nursing home. Heavens, what is this all about? April 25th? You mean a month ago? This story was breaking. New York state mandate required nursing homes to accept those recovering from COVID, even if they're contagious. That is a scandal to break all scandals. How many people died because of Andrew Cuomo and his state orders? Well, thank thank the, the lucky stars that we can talk about giant prop cotton swabs where Andrew Cuomo gets a puff piece and no one actually challenges him or questions what's really going on. That's CNN for you. They've totally jumped the shark, man. And I, I know that I've ragged on them in the past. Many of us, we, we rag on them all the time. But uh, I, I, I guess for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and be the CNN review channel. I've done so many videos about CNN, to be honest. And I don't, I, 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 I don't like doing it. I'm very critical of CNN for only focusing on uh, on Fox News for the same reason. But Fox News is an opinion channel. All right. So here's the big difference. If you want to give me a play by play about CNN, uh, uh, I'm sorry, about Fox News, like what the media reporters at CNN do, where they're like, today, Fox News talked about Obama. What are you doing? That's TV guy. I don't care. But right now we got a bigger problem. Here's the real news. It's not it's not so much about CNN, to be fair to myself. This is about Andrew Cuomo costing lie like take you know what man I want to be very careful how I phrase this but when you when when the state mandates that nursing homes take in sick people I mean this is a major major scandal and what about Ron DeSantis where does Ron DeSantis go to get his apology how is it that the media will laugh and giggle oh Andrew Cuomo you silly guy look at this big old cotton swab and then Ron DeSantis of Florida whose state's doing substantially better is dragged over the coals so, OK, I, I want to get to this story. All right. With Ron DeSantis, I want to contrast how CNN and other outlets treat Andrew Cuomo, who's failed by so many metrics. And then we'll talk about how Florida actually did a good job preserving uh, civil liberties and actually having uh, less of a, 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 an outbreak with, with with COVID. What did he do right? What did Cuomo do wrong? Well, let's first take a look at what CNN's talking about from Newsbusters. Cuomo thumbs nose at accountability for governor brother plays with giant swabs. CNN has been flouting journalistic ethics for weeks as they allowed Chris Fredo Cuomo. I, I, I don't like the, 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 the name, the digs. Look, we can criticize Chris Cuomo for faking the quarantine, for lying to the American people and for doing prop comedy on what's supposed to be a serious news program. Those are all valid arguments. There's no there's no need to add insults. And I, I really do mean it. So I would prefer it if Newsbusters didn't play those games. It's an emotional dig. I, I explain this a lot, but I, I want to say it. When you see stories where they're like Fredo, they're trying to give their audience an emotional release like, ha ha, you get them. You know, it's 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 warrantless and it devalues the critique. So you don't need to do it. 
I don't need to call this guy any, any, any name other than fake news journalist, fake journalist, not real journalist. Call him those things. Go after his legacy. Go after his career because this guy is a joke. You don't need to insult him. They say Chris Cuomo uh, interviewed his Democratic brother, uh, Andrew Cuomo, almost weekly. Things came to a disgusting head during Wednesday's edition of Cuomo Primetime when Chris thumbed his nose at bipartisan calls to investigate his brother's disastrous mishandling of the outbreak in his state. Instead, he pulled out oversized prop cotton swabs to mock how big his brother's nose was. It's a little funny. It is. Like, I got a sense of humor. He said he pulls out this giant cotton swab and says, is this the cotton swab they needed to test that double barreled shotgun you put on your face? Something like that. It's funny. But it's not news. I don't turn on CNN to, to hear comedy routines. And I'll be honest, I don't turn on the president either. I can recognize he did a funny bit, but my criticism is with the journalism industry. Andrew Cuomo is responsible for death. He is. OK, again, I think most of the blame goes to China for, for lying and misleading us. We, we know this for other countries have, have corroborated this. And it's it, it would be unfair of me to say Cuomo deserves even the overwhelming majority of the blame because we as a nation were, were put into this position because of China's lies. Now, that being said, there's things you can criticize Trump for. I think he did some good things. There's a lot you can criticize Andrew Cuomo for. And let's read through this because I want to get to the Ron DeSantis part. Ron DeSantis of Florida, for those that don't, don't know. Chris began the show by bashing President Trump. Please join me tonight, not spending any more time about this nonsense about the president refusing to acknowledge anything should have been done differently in the handling of the pandemic, he chided. Have you ever heard him take responsibility for any mistake? I love this. I criticized Trump. I said he could have been uh, faster. He could have been more serious, more stern. And there are a lot of things that wasted our time at the beginning of this pandemic. But to act like Trump has done a worse job than Andrew Cuomo is laughable. As they were approaching the first commercial break, Chris drew attention to how his brother had a coronavirus test administered on him during his press conference earlier, uh, the same press conference where he deflected blame for putting COVID patients in nursing homes to President Trump. Now a few questions about the process. Chris said, first of all, is it true that when you are having the test administered, you inhaled the doctor's finger, went all the way up your nose and got stuck and had to be released with a tool? Is that true? Just to deal with, uh, just, just to deal with the record? What? Now, that was a horribly delivered bad bit. I got to be honest. Then after comparing his brother's nose to, a, uh, uh, to that of a proboscis monkey, Chris proceeded to pull out prop cotton swabs that grew to ridiculous sizes that measured feet long pictured above. OK, I enjoy some good prop comedy. I enjoy some good comedy bits. I do not turn on CNN primetime to see interviews with the governor of New York, who's responsible for death, so that you can make jokes about his nose and show prop comedy, do, do a prop comedy routine. If I want to, I'll put on Comedy Central. I'll go watch South Park or Family Guy. This is what we get. CNN is supposed to be a serious news network. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, CNN. You want to rag on Fox News? I'm fine with it. I really am. I think it's silly. That's the only thing you do. I certainly rag on many other networks. I ragged on MSNBC last night. So yeah, of course, I'll criticize New York Times, MSNBC, CNN, many other outlets that are running this line and putting up fake news. Now, Fox News is one channel. I understand they're the highest rated cable channel and they do have a lot of influence. But even though Fox News is the highest rated cable channel, getting, you know, three averaging like three million viewers, like in primetime, you combine all the other networks, you're getting tens of millions of viewers. But by by all means, you can criticize Fox News. All right. The problem is, what's the criticize about Fox News? They have bad opinions. I've criticized them in the past. The most I, you know, I come up with usually is they run dumb segments usually in the mornings. It's not always bad. It's usually opinion stuff. So if Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram have bombastic opinions, I roll my eyes. I don't watch it. The same is true for Rachel Maddow, though I've heavily criticized Rachel Maddow for going full conspiracy theorist. Now, they'll they'll argue, yeah, but Hannity's conspiracy theorist, blah, blah, blah. No, uh, hold on. Hold on. It was not Fox News that went Russiagate for three years. OK, that was you guys. That was CNN and MSNBC. MSNBC. That's why I'm a bit more reticent to be like, what is Fox News talking about today? But I did. I did last year when they ran an anti-evolution segment. I thought it was ridiculous. Actually did. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was just over a year ago. So Fox News, what do we get? Opinion stuff. Um, opinions. That's really it. I mean, you know, what do you want me to say? CNN is doing prop comedy. OK, uh, uh, hold on, man. Hold, hold on a second. I understand. I rag on uh, uh, the, Fo- the CNN personalities for being Fox News Review Channel. OK, I have done a ton of videos about CNN. Fair critique, except there is a difference here prop comedy. I don't know what else to say to this. It's not journalism. 
It is literally reality TV. I've been saying this. Jim Acosta argues with the president, that, that Caitlin woman argues with the president. They do bits, they do routines, and they're literally doing prop comedy now. All right, man. If you want to do live real-time comedy show like Jon Stewart, uh, go go for it, I guess. I, I you know. Listen, they've been doing these routines with Chris Cuomo and his brother, Andrew Cuomo. Chris Cuomo faked the quarantine. He's not a journalist. He is a, a he's now, I guess, a prop comic, not a good one. And a Andrew Cuomo has this scandal. So what do we end up with? A media that drags the Republicans. You, you, you understand my bias, okay? It's, you know, people will say I'm, I'm objective or unbiased and all that stuff. Maybe that's true. And I, I think about this a lot. And I wonder if maybe the reason I really just am constantly pointing the finger at Democrats and the media is because that is the truth. Think about it. Andrew Cuomo is in the worst affected state, the hotspot, the epicenter of the world. Andrew Cuomo. His brother lives there. What do we get? Prop comedy on TV. The Democratic governor with an 80% approval rating propped up by the press, protected by his brother, and they just laugh. Ha ha, John Conswab. Ron DeSantis of Florida. Where does he go to get his apology? It is, it is, it is just a fact that the Republican-led states have fared better in many ways. That South Dakota was supposed to be this hotspot because they refused to lock down. It's not. That Florida was supposed to be. It's not. And Ron DeSantis said this. He said, they kept saying, oh, in two weeks. Oh, next week. Oh, here it comes. Eight weeks out. None of it happened. Let's read some of this. The National Review. The Florida governor explains a COVID-19 strategy that has gotten bad press and favorable results. A couple months ago, the media, almost as one, decided that Governor Ron DeSantis was a public menace who was going to get Floridians killed with his lax response to the coronavirus crisis. In an interview with the National Review, DeSantis says he was surprised at how knee-jerk the hostile coverage was. But he also knew that none of these people knew anything about Florida at all. So I didn't care what they were saying. The conventional wisdom has begun to change about Florida. As the disaster so widely predicted hasn't materialized, it's worth delving into the state's response. As described by DeSantis and a couple of uh, uh, members of his team, because it is the opposite of the media narrative of a Trump-friendly governor disregarding the facts to pursue a reckless agenda. DeSantis and his team have followed the science closely from the beginning, which is why they forged a nuanced approach, but one that focused like a laser on the most vulnerable population, those in nursing homes. What did Andrew Cuomo do? mandated, a state mandate. I'll, I'll be careful how I phrase this, but there was a state mandate that people who were contagious be brought into nursing homes. An irony to the national coverage of the coronavirus crisis is that at the same time DeSantis was being made into a villain, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo was being elevated as a hero, even though DeS the DeSantis approach to nursing homes was obviously superior to that of Cuomo. Florida went out of its way to get COVID-19 positive people out of nursing homes, while New York went out of its way to get them in, a policy now widely acknowledged to have been a debacle. Anyone with any sane, with, with, with two brain cells to rub together could tell you, you put sick people in a nursing home, you get dead people. What is, what? you know what, man? When will they get tired of being wrong? This is what the scariest thing to me is. The national media, they call me biased. And I wonder sometimes, I do. It's like, I really do rag on them so often. But how often am I wrong? I'm wrong often, for, to, to, to be sure. I issue corrections. I issue apologies. But I'm less wrong than they are. I wasn't wrong about Jesse Smollett or Covington or Russia Gate. To be honest, I don't take hard stances. And that makes it very easy not to be wrong. But isn't that the smarter approach? Instead of coming out and screaming, we knew it, we got them, slapping the thing on the table. This is it. The walls are closing in on Trump. We say, all right, we'll see what happens. Calm down. Like the same thing with the, uh, the Arbery case. I say, don't, don't, don't jump the gun. Don't rush to this one. And now we're seeing a very, very nuanced story there. So many people just want to claim they know. And that's my warning to all of you. You don't. Wait till you have the evidence. So it's, it's easy for me to say, you know, um, uh, I, it was Mike Cernovich tweeted this a while ago that, you know, I've never seen Tim Pool be wrong on any big major story. I have been like, but but it, it's it's within, uh, to, to be fair, like when I said in, in 2018, I think the Republicans are going to see a red wave. It's very different, my prediction on like political opinion in the country versus me falsely accusing someone of something. So that's fair to say. It's really easy not to be wrong when you don't try to be right before the evidence comes out. But look what we get from the national media. They want to be first. They want to be front and center. They want to get that opinion out. They want to know for sure before they've seen any proof of anything. And what we end up with is consistently wrong. We, we, we have, look, journalists are supposed to protect, protect the public. To, I'm not saying it's their sole duty, 
They're supposed to come out and tell us, here's what the government has done. And to the journalists who have published the stories exposing Cuomo, my, you know, uh, my respect, 100%. I mean, this story from NBC, Susie Kim pointing out that, look at this, there's a state mandate to do this. I really appreciate that opening paragraph. That's journalism. I appreciate that. And that's what, what's, what's so awful about today's uh, uh, media landscape is that I would say the bulk of journalists are real journalists. You don't know their names. You don't hear their names because they're sitting in an office and they're typing, you know, Andrew Cuomo did this, Chris Cuomo did that. What you get are the grifters. You know, I, I really don't like that word, but let's be honest. Chris, uh, uh, Chris Cuomo, he faked quarantine and he's the prime time celebrity making millions of dollars. What a shame. You know, deserves to make a good salary. The journalists who are being honest and just reporting the news every day. And, and, and I, I apologize if they if, if my my uh, um, broad rhetoric sometimes wraps them up in this because I rag on journalism a lot and these media industries a lot. But if you work for CNN, if you work for CNN and you say, well, I need the job, I'm going to stay, then you do not deserve respect. And that's exactly why, you know, you're, you're part of the problem. NBC News has been hiring activists who lie and use the platform to push policies on, on, on companies like we saw with Google recently, the activist, you know, uh, writing a story and then cheering when Democrats intervene and, you know, doing virtual high fives with people like we did it. We got our we got our ideological policy pushed through because I made a stink about it. That's the problem. That's why I left these companies. So you, you know what, man? Maybe that's just me, my ethics, my principles. When I saw how bad it was getting, I said, I'm not going to work here anymore. I'm done. I would rather do nothing than contribute to this insanity. How many times can you be wrong? And what, at what point do they say, I'm tired of being wrong? Let's read a little bit more. The media didn't exactly have their eyes on the ball. The day that the media had their first big freak out about Florida was March 15th, DeSantis recalls, which was where, uh, which was there were people on Clearwater Beach and it was this big deal. That same day is when we signed in the executive order to uh, one, ban visitation in nursing homes, and two, ban the reintroduction of a COVID positive patient into nursing homes. DeSantis is bemused by the obsession with Florida's beaches. When they opened in Jacksonville, it was a big national story, usually relayed with a dire tone. Jacksonville has almost no COVID activity outside of a nursing home context, he said. Their hospitalizations are down, ICU down, since the beaches opened a month ago, and yet nobody talks about it. It's just like, okay, we just move on to the next target. One of the most important made uh, important points made about Jacksonville is there's no people sick there. And so they open the beaches and the journalists are like, oh, no, what have they done? What have they done? And and nobody getting sick on the beaches. You have right now a story about Virginia Beach. Everyone flood uh, rushes to the beaches because they remained closed. And now you see the government lost control. Perhaps the smart thing to do would be to open with controls. It's what we often say, it's what liberals used to say about regulation of contraband, of of controlled substances. You're better off legalizing these things with restrictions and controls so you can guide and control and make sure things don't fall apart. Otherwise, you end up with cartels. So instead, Virginia Beach says we will not reopen and people go to the beach anyway. And this time and, and now because they're defying your orders, they don't care anymore. You get the opposite in Florida. They say, "Okay, okay, we'll reopen. But you try and do it right. Perhaps more understandably, the villages, the iconic senior community, was a focus of media worries. According to DeSantis, as of last weekend, there hadn't been a single resident of the villages in the hospital for COVID-19 for about a week. At one point, the infection rate in the villages was so low that state officials were worried that they were missing something. So I got the University of Florida to do a study, he said. They did 1,200 asymptomatic uh, seniors at the villages, and not one of them came back positive, which was really incredible. So how did DeSantis go, go about responding to the epidemic? It began with the data and trying to learn the lesson of other countries. You get the point. Where does he go for his apology? And why is the media still laughing and cheering and celebrating Cuomo? I'll tell you why, man. I have my biases. I do. Um, what, what, does that, what does that mean? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll typically have a reaction where I do not trust the Democratic establishment and the media. Why? Because of this picture you see on your screen. For those that are listening, it is Chris Cuomo laughing, holding an oversized novelty cotton swab while his brother laughs. 
because CNN is in the bag for the Democrats, because the company that owns CNN donated to, you know, is one of the principal supporters of Hillary Clinton. It's because they have even said on the air that they did a lot to help Hillary Clinton. It's because the Democratic governor of New York, who many people think will be swapped out, potentially be a Democratic nominee or could be in the next cycle, is being protected by one of the largest news networks. I shouldn't even call it a news network anymore. So yes, Perhaps I've developed a bias since then watching this happen. Or perhaps if you want an honest assessment of what's happening, I could say this. New York is the epicenter. By all accounts, you could blame China. But if we're looking internally at this country, we have two states, Florida maligned by the press, South Dakota maligned by the press. How have things gone in those states? Remarkably better than New York. What does the media say? Florida bad, South Dakota bad. New York, good. There are still journalists calling out New York. There are still publications now challenging New York City, ProPublica, for instance. And that's because there is real journalism. Bias as many of these people may be, they really don't like the president. It's fine. There are still journalists challenging Cuomo. But when it comes to the mainstream, high profile, multi million dollar cable news stuff, you want to rag on Fox News, do it. Fine. I don't care. I'm a criticism of everybody all around. But this is what we can expect from CNN. Sorry, man. These, these mainstream, high profile journalists. Our, our, our performative reality TV shows. That's what it is. CNN on TV is not real news. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.